Probably the most embarrassing time I have in a football pitch. Aston Villa have come here in the heat of a relegation battle and they are ripping Sunderland apart. Such a bad run of form at home, conceding goals, the fans react and that's what they've done now. They're under big pressure now. A little over five hours ago, Sunderland announced the firing of manager Gus Poyet. Dick Abacat becomes the seventh Sunderland manager in less than seven years and his brief is simple, deliver a ninth consecutive season in the Barclays Premier League. I think he obviously saw that players that were kind of just feeling, feeling too much pressure and he was experienced enough to say, look, I'll take all that pressure, I'll put it on my shoulders. Derby day in the North East. My first derby, so I can imagine I was really looking forward to it. All I wanted to do was just win and I thought if I could get a goal, then, you know, people remember this forever. It was one of those moments that I'll never forget. And I felt like a little kid again, because I cried. A point is all Sunderland need to save their season. But it's a big ask against a side who have only lost one of their last ten games. But we have nothing to lose there, because everybody expects that we're losing. Safety in sight. It's on the last few seconds. On the night when Sunderland achieved safety, even a man who'd been in football for over half a century like Dick Advocat was in floods of tears at the end of the game, and even then he said he'd seen nothing like that. Sunderland's blue-collar roots make it an unlikely location to attract an American teenager. But for California-born Lyndon Gooch, the city's insatiable appetite for football was intoxicating. It's probably completely different to anything you'll experience. I think the, the city revolves around the football club and you know that straight away. I mean, you had opportunities with other Premier League clubs. West Ham, London-based. It's what most foreign players look for in a team. What made you, out of all your options, choose Sunderland? I don't know. I, I, it was just, it just felt right. You know, I obviously knew the people in the club a long time, all the coaches, and they looked after me and my dad really well when we'd come over, and they were just great people to be around and, and work for. How did the waves on Roca Beach <laughs> compared to those that you grew up with in Santa Cruz? Yeah, it's, it's definitely a little different, but uh, I love them both. I've, I mean, four and a half years here now, and this is definitely my second home. And yeah, it might be a little bit more windy and colder, but uh, I love it. The name Sunderland itself, it means the sundered land. It means a land apart. Geographically, we're on a little bit of a limb. Nobody ever drives through Sunderland on the way to somewhere else. Sunderland is, it's, is a destination, or you, you're just not coming to the place at all. But once you're here, for a lot of people, our former chairman and former player and briefly manager, a famous player called Niall Quinn, summed it up beautifully when he said that Sunderland had got under his skin. You know, a lot of people from outside the area do come to Sunderland, including footballers, and tend to stay here for the rest of their lives because sometimes Sunderland does get under people's skin. And certainly if you're from here, you tend to be very, very proud of being from Sunderland. I think when you have a, a small, proud city like Sunderland, up in the north, out of the way, I think that produces a kind of bond amongst the supporters and the football club is there to unite everybody. It, it really does unite creeds, colours, backgrounds and is a great source of unification for the city. It's no surprise that the style of football favoured by the club shares the hallmarks of the city's most dominant and revered values. Obviously a very passionate city, especially about football. Uh, and that's something I've learned since I've been here. Obviously the industry plays a big part, car manufacturing is a huge part of it. That's played a key role in the, the economy of the area too, but also then they've worked hard all week and then they come and support our team um, at the weekend. And uh, so thankfully since I've been here, we've been able to stay in the Premier League and keep that run going for, for the team in the area. Living in this area, you, you got to know what it takes to, to play for this football club and to represent the people of this city, because you, you have to work hard, that's, that's all they ask for. Award goes towards the near post, it's just over him. Ball! What a goal! Cometh the hour in the game. Cometh Kevin Ball, the man. 
Few people are more qualified to extol the virtues of Sunderland supporters than Kevin Ball. You talk about the characters that fit in in the club. What are the traits, what are the values of the Sunderland players that really thrive here? I think the, the Sunderland players that thrive here is ones that see a challenge because I think you've got to be honest when you come here, it's not going to be easy because are they demanding? Yeah. But I don't, there's nothing wrong with that. I think that's to be expected. They fuel your fire, these supporters. Great response by Sunderland when the odds seem to be stacked against them and Kevin Ball never say die. If you're a player with great ability and you work OK, I said they'll have you to start with because they'll see your ability. But the minute they see you stop working hard enough to allow that ability to come through, I said they'll have you. Simple as that. I said because they'll see you as a waste of talent. I went, and if you do that, serves you right. I've got no sympathy for it. If you're a player who's got what I would class as good football skills, but with a massive heart or work hard week in, week out to achieve, they'll just love you. Kevin Ball, very much the leader of the pack for Sunderland. A great tackler or a good header or whatever the case may be is cheered almost as, as loudly as a goal is, you know what I mean? Is they appreciate it. They love a bit of the grind here. It's important though to, to, have, to have players like that in, in the team, it's that English culture. Just to be present from Sunderland, everyone works hard. That's what they're known for. They're grafters, they're hard workers, and that's what, that's what you get brought up to do when you're in the academy here. And it suited me. I, I liked being here. It wasn't, wasn't a big city. I could just get my head down and work hard. Obviously, it's, it's old school. We have to do jobs. We have to clean every dressing room. We have to scrub the floors. We have to clean first team's boots. And they really teach you to, to graft and work for, work for your money. He's a proper footballer. In terms of stature, Linden's not six foot two or six foot three, but he also has a heart, you know, the size of a dustbin lid. And it's the fact that he's had that upbringing, he knows what it's all about. And for him to take us to his heart, like we have him, for me is fantastic. Every game, even if it's an under 21 game or under 18 game, there's, there's fans coming to watch us all and see how good all the youngsters are coming through. And they're so passionate, they just want the football club to be successful. And, obviously have players from the academy play as well. It means a lot to them to have players that come through the system. And that's the final whistle. Sunderland's wait for a first win of the season goes on. Can you clear up your future? No. I don't want to discuss about my own future. Let's wait and see. Good morning. Multiple news sources are reporting today that Dick Avocat has quit as head coach of Sunderland. Sunderland's new era begins. Sam Allardyce has returned to the Premier League as Sunderland's new boss. Good ball to Fletcher! Uncontained euphoria on Wearside. Big, big win for Allardyce, big, big win for Sunderland. Half a dozen reasons for Everton cheer. Sunderland after the uplift of last week, this is a horrid crash back down to earth. Sunderland's worrying campaign continues. You know, we have to face the facts and we didn't really produce enough quality. As we go into 2016, Sunderland just hoping that they can stay in the hunt. Seven points adrift of safety. You know, it really hits you and you think, the games are running out. We really need to start getting results now. Here come the teams for a massive match. We played Chelsea at home, losing. And I have to say, the, the team spirit was just like, it was unbelievable. It's Barini! It's in! Fabio Barini! Sunderland are level again! Edlin on to it. It's Defoe! It's extraordinary! It's breathtaking! Where there is Defoe! It was unbelievable, to be honest, you know, you get the goosebumps and stuff and that. But that roar at the end... <sighs> After you beat Chelsea, you said the fans won us the game. Yeah, they did. Just the atmosphere in the stadium, it was just... Even when you're fatigued and you're tired, you just you find a little bit extra. Sunderland will confirm their safety and condemn Newcastle and Norwich to relegation if they beat Everton later. Cassidy almost scored direct. Now they've got a goal. Sunderland have found the way. 
Another extraordinary escape. We have put our fans through the mill somewhat in, in recent years. Certainly we are the Black Cats and in the last nine years we have made full use of all of those nine lives. It doesn't matter how many days you spend in the relegation zone, what matters is where you are when the season's finished. Sunderland in recent years have always managed to finish the right side of the line and we intend to finish the right side of the line this year again. You've said to me, the people here, they build their life on three pillars. So there's three pillars, uh, I think, for the people of Sunderland, and that is, first of all, work, and traditionally that's been heavy industries, such as uh, shipbuilding, uh, the pits, the mines. The, um, the second pillar is faith. It's a very religious uh, city. Uh, the monks came here o over a 1,000 years ago. That was a, a kind of... Uh, cradle of Christianity in the north of England. And I suppose the third pillar which unites all the city, whether they work down the pits or in the shipyards or in the shops, doesn't matter what religion they are, the third pillar that unites them all is the football club. It's like a mega church that they never stop believing in. Yeah, I think uh, <laughs> the, the, there's a lot being made of that because it is like a religion. It, you know, it's about coming together, it's about belonging to a, a, a community. It's not a big city, it's a small city, and, and most of the city will be watching the football games w when it's on. It's about coming together and uniting behind something that they believe in very strongly. Your team, they seem to have two gears. Slow start to the season in which they don't really gain many points at all. Yeah. You say that's the test of faith. And then they have that climactic final straight in which they beat all comers and just escape doom yeah. at the last gasp. A footballing miracle. Sunderland are safe. A performance of guts and defiance in North London. This famous old club will be among the elite once again. Which state catalyzes more religion amongst the fans? <laughs> well, I suppose every year we start off with optimism and, yeah, you know, you hear people in the church saying, trust in God, this is going to be our season, we'll be pushing the top half of the table, and then by the end, everybody, everybody's religious because they're desperate to stay up and not be relegated and want to stay in what is the best league in, in, in the world, and we've managed to do that. It's amazing, really, when things aren't going bad, my, my church is in the city centre of, of Sunderland, so I put a big board out on match days saying, come in and light a candle for the team. On match days, you'll get a couple of thousand people on their way to the match coming in, and it shows that actually they're, they're putting something in this, they want all the help they can get, and we've needed it. Tell us why you cancelled Easter Mass. <laughs> Don't tell my bishop, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a big day, not just because it was the resurrection of our Lord in the church, but because it was also the Derby Day where we played our arch local rivals, Newcastle. There is no more heartfelt occasion in English football. And I knew most people would, would miss church in any way. They would all be wanting to watch the derby. It's the fixture that we all want to see and to be part of. So we postponed mass and went to the game to see a great victory. It's the foul! What a goal! You told the local press, you said, Sunderland only play well after Easter because... Easter's the time of resurrection. That's right, yeah. That's, that was a real turning point for us last year when we, we, we took off and uh, we, we, we ended up surviving. A stellar day for Sunderland. And the whole picture at the bottom of the table changes. Sunderland have new life in the relegation battle. You do have a fairly unique but rational explanation for at least one of the relegation escapes. Well, I was, going, um, I was going to Rome a few years ago and I met the Pope. I was lucky enough to get an audience uh, and Pope Francis is a huge soccer fan um, and he used to be a season ticket holder in, when he lived in Argentina in San Lorenzo. He's, he's interested, he does, he gets a Swiss card to bring him a newspaper every, uh, every Sunday morning with, with uh, the results in. So I went to meet him and I presented him. We, ha we had a Sunland strip with Papa Francesco written on the back. Uh, and I give it to him, and he said, oh, um, Sunderland, um, oh, not do too well, he said, in his broken English. <laughs> and I said, no, so he knew he had been watching. And I asked him to hold it up, and we got some great photos of him holding up a Sunderland strip. And I said, will you do us a favor, say a prayer for Sunderland? Oh, yes, he said, uh, um, I pray for Sunderland, you pray for me. 
and I said, deal. And um, he took it away, and uh, then we came home, and we beat Newcastle on the Saturday, so there you are, Pope Francis is a Sunderland supporter as well. Sunderland, the club transformed today. It is Derby Day delight for the men on Wearside. Intervention at the highest levels. Uh, absolutely, why not? It wasn't the only time prayer has led to wonder ahead of the Bournemouth game. Good afternoon from a sunny afternoon on the south coast. This is for the 11th time of asking David Moyes, Sunderland hope to record their first league win of the season. You crafted a prayer for the players, the team, the city. Yeah, I put it on my Twitter account and uh, put it out there and uh, got a few retweets and people took to it and, and said the prayer. Stanislas finding Smith. Gosling finds the net. Wonderful move from Bournemouth. And Sunderland's woes are compounded. The Lord our God, fill all the Sunderland players with strength in mind, body and heart so that they can do their best for each other, for all of the staff and for all those who support them. The foe. Van Aanholt outside in, those two have scored all of Sunderland's Premier League goals between them so far this season. And Nietzsche beats rectified that though, out of nothing, the Black Hats are back on level terms. Grant them self-belief and a spirit of confidence. Amen. Here comes Sunderland with a rare attack of their own. And Nietzsche beats! Fouled by Smith and Sunderland have a penalty and a chance to take the lead. Jermaine Defoe in the 600th appearance of his English club career. 2-1 Sunderland. It is an extraordinary scoreline in the context of what we've seen. And that was our first victory of the season, so the power of prayer never lets you down. They got three points, and afterwards you tweeted, well, that worked. <laughs> power of prayer, what more can you say? Euphoric scenes from the Sunderland supporters. David Moyes' Black Cats are off and running. Finally in the 2016-17 Premier League campaign. They have that elusive first victory of the season. What if God is a whole city film? <laughs> I, I don't think he... I don't think God uh, would back or pit clubs off against each other. I think he's at work in the people in every club um, wherever there is goodness, wherever there are, um, wherever there's a sense of community, wherever there's a sense of passion, wherever there are gifts and talents being used for a, a team and for other people, then God is present, I believe so.